we're not going to call her this morning until we do so, is that we believe her name came up when they, they began interviewing all the Valley's employees around that time period. So we're going to see if there's another way that she would have come up through that, that we can then argue that it's not just from the computer. So right now we're not going to call her this morning because we haven't had time to do that. So we'll leave it at that for now. And if we do think we have the ability to bring her in again, we'll raise it with the court. All right. call your next witness. So who's your next witness? Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm your testimony in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Be seated. Kind of a soft voice. Okay. Okay. Um, could you tell us your name and spell your first and last name for the record? Uh, Sabrina Lucia Strike. Uh, S A B R I N A. L U C I A S T R I E C K. Would you like a little cup of water? That'd be great. Thanks. Thank you. I live in Yakima, Washington. And how long have you lived in Yakima? About eight months. Where did you live before Yakima? Seattle for about 12 years. And do you remember the approximate years that you lived in Seattle? Uh, let's see. Um, I moved up there uh, 99 of June. Um, I moved back to Yakima very, very briefly briefly, like maybe a month or so mm -hmm. in the midst of those 12 years. I think I did that maybe twice. Mm -hmm. And then came back to Seattle? Yes. Are you married now? I am. And how long have you been married? Uh, five years. Okay. Um, do you remember where you worked around between 2001 and 2003? Uh, 2001, 2003, I worked at Valley Fitness. At Valley's Fitness? Uh -huh. And where was that located? Uh, Linwood. Okay. And did you know the defendant uh, Dave Peets there? I did. How did you know him? 
I met him um, when I worked at one of the grand opening casino nights at the uh, North Seattle location. At the Bally's Gym? Yes. Okay. And did you actually work in the same club together? Um, I substituted a couple times in North Seattle, mm -hmm. um, but maybe a year or so later, he was transferred to um, the Linwood location where I was working. Okay. Now, in preparation for today's testimony, you've had to try to figure out some dates in your head, right, to think yeah. back that far? Yeah. Um, do you remember a road trip that you took with your future husband? Yes, And I what do. year that was? Uh, that would have been, we've been together for 10 years, so uh, 10 years ago in... 2003? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So has that sort of helped you to put a time frame around the times that we're talking about? A little bit, yes. Okay. Um, do you remember how old you were when you first met the defendant? I must have been 20. And what were you doing um, at the Linwood gym? What was your job there? A receptionist. And what did he do at the gym? Um, sales manager, general manager. Okay. They switch the titles sometimes. Okay. And were you going to school as well? I was. Um, when you met the defendant, was he married at that time? No, he was not. Was he engaged? Yes, he was. And do you know who he was engaged to? Uh, uh, Nicole Zercher. Okay. Um, how did you first get along when you met him? Uh, very well. Okay. Can you describe sort of what the relationship was like, just work-wise and interaction-wise? Um, friendly, uh, you know, joking around. Mm -hmm. Flirting, would you say? A little bit. Okay. Um, at some point, did it turn into something more? Uh, yes, it did. Okay. Um, can you talk about, I think there was a dress-up dinner that you went shopping for. Can you tell us about that? Um, yeah, he asked if I wanted to go shopping with him for, um, for the corporate party, holiday party or something. For the workplace? Uh -huh. And so did you do that? Yes. Okay. And did you find something to buy? Yeah. Okay. What did you find? I just found a top. I didn't expect that he was going to find me anything. Right. So. Did he pay for that? Yes. Okay. Um, were you living by yourself at the time? No. I was living in a house with three other roommates. And what was your phone situation like? Um, <laughs> horrible. Um, with a lot of friends um, upset that I didn't have a cell phone. Um, so, yeah, a lot of messages didn't get passed along because um, every, everybody in the house had jobs and some of them were kind of lazy. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't get my messages all the time. Okay, so people had a hard time getting a hold of you sometimes? Yeah, mostly called me at work to get a hold of me. Okay. So did you talk to the defendant about that, or did he talk to you about that? Uh, he talked to me about that. And what did he say? He said that he was tired of not being able to get a, get a hold of me or have me get his messages. So what did he do? I uh, said we were going to go to the mall and um, get me a phone. A cell phone? Mm -hmm. And did you do that? Yes. Had you talked with him much by phone? I mean, what sort of prompted that? happening? I, I don't actually remember him calling the house a whole lot, but like, like I said, I didn't get my messages very yeah. often. Mm -hmm. um, we actually talked more on the phone when he would call uh, the Linwood gym to talk to uh, uh, Derek, Derek Murray. Okay. Um, since I was the one who answered the phone, we would talk for a little bit. Okay. And again, to clarify, he, the defendant was not working at the Linwood gym at the time? No, he was not. With you. Okay. So when he brought you the cell phone, who was supposed to pay the cell phone bill? Um, my understanding was that he was. Okay. And did he pay for other things for you too? Um, there was just um, a moving man that uh, when I moved in with um, my friend Noelia, who worked at the North Seattle location, mm -hmm. um, we were scrambling with, um, you know, deposits and stuff like that. So um, he helped me out with some money for uh, moving in. Okay. 
So when you got the cell phone that, that day, um, before that you've described sort of basically a flirtatious relationship. Is the cell phone purchase day the day the relationship changed? Around that time? Uh, essentially, yeah. Okay. Now, you knew he was engaged to Nicole? Not when I first met him. Okay. Um, but when your relationship moved forward, you knew that? Yes, I did. And um, what did he tell you about the relationship with her? He actually really didn't talk to me about her a, a whole lot. Okay. Did he talk about the idea of getting married? Not really, no. Okay. Um, do you remember talking about uh, with him about his un being unsure about it? That came much later, okay. uh, much later in the relationship. Okay. Was that still while he was engaged? Yes. Okay. Can you tell us what he said? Um, I, I asked him why he was getting married, and, um, and he said that at that point it was too late to back out of it. Okay. Was he feeling unsure about whether he wanted to? It seemed like. Um, to say something like that, yeah. um, although it could have just been to make me happy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, did he talk to you about how he and Nicole got along? Uh, I'm not. I'm not positive on if that was while they were engaged or if that was while they were married. But he would say often how she wouldn't allow him to do. Yeah, this or that. Thing. Okay. Um, okay. We'll get to that in a second. Okay. I'm gonna. Um, let me give you. I know you've had a chance to review the statement that you gave uh, to police. Is that right? The mm -hmm. lengthy statement. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I gave you the statement, would it help to refresh your memory on certain points? Yes. Okay. It's a pretty big one. So. Yeah. I'm going to hand you States 28. Um, does that appear to be the transcript that you reviewed? Yes. And that was an interview done last year, right? In yeah, 2012? it would have been March. I believe this was the day that, that I was told he was arrested. Okay. I'm going to direct you to page 8 in that statement. And I want you to, if you would, please look about just slightly past the midpoint of the page where it says, and and the way. Do you see that line? Oh, yeah. Could you review the next few lines and see if that refreshes your memory about precisely okay. what he said? And, and um, You way. don't have to read them. Oh, That's okay. okay. No, that's okay. okay. Council, what page are we on? Eight. <clears throat> and where did you ask her to start reading? Um, starting just after the midpoint. And how long, how far are you asking her to read to? Um, <laughs> to refresh her memory with regard to my question, with regard to what the defendant told her about marrying Nicole. Okay. Does that refresh your memory? Yes. Yes. Okay, and what did he tell you? Um, it was kind of in a nutshell of not really getting along, but the specifics of why and how, um, either I don't remember or it was never given to me specifically. Okay. So. Does reading that refresh your memory about whether he thought that he was ready to do it? Yes. And what did he say? Um, saying exactly I'm not ready to do it wasn't what was okay said. what did he say um like i said he said it's too late to back out of it now okay i'm but i'm directing you to your statement mm -hmm. and the line in your statement do you see where i'm referencing yeah 
Oh, I'm not sure if this is what I want to do sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's what he was talking about with yeah. the marriage. him alone um, where would you get together um, most of the time it was at lunch there were a couple times that he came by my apartment when I was living in Greenwood uh, so during the engagement those would be where I would see him okay and um, during this period when you talk about a lunch does that mean he would come over like on his lunch break or something yeah, I mean, sometimes we'd go out to lunch, but yeah, sometimes you'd come over on his lunch break. Since okay. Because I lived very close to the gym. Okay. And during this period, um, and we're going to have to break this down a little bit, mm -hmm. um, did you have sexual relations with him? No. Okay. And, Miss uh, Strike, when you think of the term sexual relations to you, what does that mean? Is that the completed act? Um, that means to me the completed act um, or oral sex. Okay. And what do you describe as messing around when you use that term? Um, making out, kissing. Okay. And did you do that? Yes. Okay. Um, was there, during this engagement period, um, what you're telling us is that he would come to your house and meet you, and all you would do is kiss? I mean, we talked a lot. Okay. So, um, I mean, yeah, a lot of our relationship, we did talk a lot. Mm -hmm. so it, it wasn't just an intimate relationship. I understand that, and I, I understand how you felt about him. Um, what I am trying to ask without being too crass about it is specifically with regard to the physical relationship because people use different terms for what they consider to be various acts. Okay. So what, and I know this is not easy to talk about, but what I'd like you to tell us a little bit is the, in terms of the physical relationship during that period, what it involved, if we can just narrow it to that. Okay. Um, so as as far as the physical relationship went, during that time of the engagement, there wasn't clothes coming off, mm -hmm. um, so the activity didn't go that far. Mm -hmm. What did it involve? Um, I, I, I don't know. I'm, just I'm, I'm sorry to have to ask you. No, it's okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, kissing, holding on to each other, that sort of thing, I mean, I don't know if most people understand what making out means, but that's... Everybody has a different definition. Yeah. That's the problem. So, um, so, yeah, sometimes it was laying down on my couch, and sometimes it was laying down on my bed, but... Body-to-body okay. um, -body contact. Yes. Okay. Um, possibly with hands on other parts of the body. Yeah. Is that accurate? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so, how long... Well, l let me ask you this. While all this was going on, did he say anything to you about you with regard to him or your relationship with him? What was your impression of what he thought of you? Your Honor, could, I would object. I would think her impression of that would be irrelevant. Well, I can ask what he told her. I'll ask it that way. What, do, what did he tell you about how he felt about you? He told me he cared about me. Okay. And did you ever talk with him about leaving Nicole? Um, that was just the one time, and that was when he told me that it was too late to back out. Okay. Um, as time went on, did your feelings for him grow? How did you feel about him? Yeah, I, I started to yeah, definitely care about him more and more as time went on. Mm -hmm. So how long um, did this, well, let me ask, let me back up a little bit. Um, did your roommate ever interrupt you, catch him there? Uh, sort of, yes. Okay. Um, so uh, her and I were from the same hometown. We went to high school together. And so for Christmas, we were going to um, go home. And I had a pet chinchilla that um, I didn't want to pack up the cage and take her with me. So I was trying to figure out somebody to um, just stop in and feed and water her while we were gone. And 
Dave actually said that he could do it, but that would look strange if he was offering up to come and take care of my pet. Because as far as anybody knew, like, what was I to him? So Noelia just actually suggested I ask him. And Noelia was your roommate? Yeah, Noelia was my roommate. And she was like, well, he lives so close by and he works so close by, why don't you just ask him if he'll do it? And so that worked out perfectly. So he came over one night and I was going to give him the key, but it was actually more to come over and see me. But that was the perfect excuse when Noelia walked in. Dave jumped up off the couch and kind of was like, do I go out the balcony? Where do I go? And then just stood in the middle of the room. So when Noelia came in and she looked at him, she just had a very confused look on her face. And she was like, what are you doing here? And I just said right out, I was like, I'm showing him how to take care of the chinchilla. So that got us out of that. However, in the end, he didn't show up to take care of her. The chinchilla? So far as you knew, had you told anybody about this relationship? Or were you trying to keep it private? I was trying to keep it private, but I did decide to tell Noelia since we were living together. It would avoid a sticky situation like that again. Okay. So when he was talking about going out off the balcony when she walked in, how would you describe how did he seem to you in terms of his emotions or his demeanor? Extremely nervous. Did you ever talk to him about sort of what he wanted in life? Sure. Okay. And do you remember when he turned 25? Uh-huh. Was that sort of a significant time for him? Yeah. And why was that? He felt that was old, especially old for what he had achieved, wanting more money, wanting – I don't know if he was serious about wanting to be a stockbroker, but he would talk a lot about that sort of thing, really liking movies like Playing Barry Glenn Ross, that sort of thing. So he definitely had these really big, grandeur pictures of having a lot of money, cars, until your possessions, nice apartments. I mean, he lived in Everett and lived all the way downtown in Fountain Court. And did he talk to you about what he thought about people's looks and whether that was important to him? Yeah, that was very – Irrelevant. Go ahead. Yeah, that was very important. He commented on appearance quite often. I don't remember the exact – I don't know if it was an apartment building. There was some place of business or it was an apartment building where he talked about every single person that was in there looked absolutely perfect. And then there was also – when we went downtown, he would talk about how he felt like he had to dress up to go downtown. So a lot of things were based on appearance. And did you have an understanding from what he told you about whether he had financial issues at that point? I wouldn't say financial issues like being in debt, but financial issues as in not having as much money as he would like. How long did this go on? So the first time we were seeing each other, I'm actually not sure how long it went on. Months, weeks, or – Probably months. Okay. And what caused it to end? The day that Nikki called me. Okay. Can you tell us what happened starting with what – and I don't – I'll cut in with questions. I don't want you to give a long narrative answer. But had the defendant called you about something that day that triggered all this or told you something about his phone? Yes. 
So um, the the previous night, um, he called me on his way home from work, like he usually did. Mm -hmm. And so the next morning, he called and left me a message that he left his phone in the car. So if I needed to get a hold of him, make sure to call him at the club. Don't call him on his phone. And whose car was it? Do you know? Uh, well, apparently the exterior was supposed to be Nikki's car, but Dave drove it, I think, more than she did. Okay. So it was, that was the car. I, I think that was the car that he was driving that night. I'm okay. not positive. So was he worried that she was going to find the phone? Um, must, must have been, yeah. Okay. So he told you to call him at the gym and not on his cell phone? Yes. Okay. And what happened after that with regard to your phone? Um, I don't know what I was out doing that day, but um, I got in the car and my phone rang and I saw Dave's number on it. So just kind of, for, I don't know why anybody else would call me from his phone and so just kind of forgetting about what, it, what he said that morning. Maybe he went back and got it at lunch, I don't know. Um, I answered it and I said, I thought you didn't have your phone today. And <clears throat> who was on the other end? It was silent for a little while, and then um, I would have to have assumed it was Nikki's voice. It was a woman's voice um, asking me why I was calling, calling her phone. Okay. Calling that telephone. She actually, I believe she actually said her phone. Okay. So did you were you confused by that? Well, I was not not really confused mm -hmm. because the second that happened, I kind of realized my mistake. I kind of realized what, what was going on then at that point. Okay. And what was your mistake? My mistake was answering, saying, I thought you left your phone. Okay. Um, did you tell the defendant about that? Yes, I did. Okay. And what was his reaction? Uh, she was pretty nervous about it. Um, he said he was going to take care of it. Um, I don't know if it was that same night or if it was a day later, but um, that's when he said that we were going to have to not see each other for a while. Okay. And did you later learn that your name had been given to Nicole, actually? That was, um, I did. That was by my roommate. Okay. Um, was he still engaged at this point, so far as you can remember? Yes, he was. Okay. So when he said, I, did you say he said back burner? Is that the way he put yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, how did that breakup go? I mean, in terms of your relationship with him, did it end badly? Well, how would um, you describe it? I had hoped that it was going to end well, um, but very shortly after, um, after that phone call, a lot of people that we worked with were telling me that he okay. was nice. Okay. That's okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, I don't know what I'm supposed to say now. Okay, I'm sorry. I just, I'm trying to find out if what you heard from other people affected what you did. So other people told you things about him and you? Is that right? No, people told me things that he said about me, negative okay. things that he had said about me. Okay. Um, and that didn't make you happy? No. Okay. At some point later, did you end up working together? Yes. Um, he... He ended up um, being transferred from Everett to Linwood as a sales manager. And you were still at Linwood? Yes, it was. Okay, so how was that at first? It was uncomfortable. Um, the, the district manager met with me and because um, he knew of the friction between us and um, asked if I wanted to stay or if I wanted to be transferred. Um, and. So I was just being a little bit stubborn, and I wanted to stay. Um, so that that was awkward. Okay. Definitely very awkward. Um, was he married at that point? At that point, he was married. Okay. Um, eventually, were you able to deal with each other at work? Yes. How did you do, How did you accomplish that? Um, uh, relatively soon after he came to um, Linwood, I. I, I just didn't want to have that awkwardness because I didn't know how long he was going to be there. So I went into his office and, you know, just kind of said, you know, we're going to be 
working together, and I would hope that you're not going to reprimand me for nothing just because of our past relationship. I hope that we can, you know, work together well. Okay. And um, did things improve after after that? It, it did. It took a little while, but um, I think especially when another coworker would come up and joke with me at the front desk, it was easier for him to do the same. Mm -hmm. okay. Eventually, um, did you start having lunch together again? Uh, when he got transferred back up to Everett. And uh, did he talk to you about Nicole and being married to Nicole during that period? Very infrequently. Mm -hmm. um, we really didn't talk about her. Okay. Did he ever tell you about uh, what she would or would not want him to do and how he felt about that? Um, obviously, she didn't want him to drink around her. Why was that? Uh, she, um, she was an alcoholic being treated for that. And did that bother him? Um, it didn't sound like it at that particular lunch, but one night that he had come over um, when I was living with Tova, um, he said that it was nice to be able to drink a microbrew and not have to worry about her being upset about it. Okay. Um, did he say anything else about what she, he thought that she was limiting him from doing? Um, off the the, the one other thing that I remember, I know that there were a couple things at that lunch that he had mentioned. The only other thing was um, the country music, which I thought was kind of strange. He what is that? Um, I think I was listening to the Dixie Chicks at the time, and he said he liked country music too, but uh, Nikki wouldn't let him listen to it. Um, then at some point, um, did you leave Seattle? Is that the short period of time you're talking about when you went to Yakima? I did, yeah. Okay. And that was for a month or two? Um, actually, I think, that, yeah, I think that was only for about a month. Okay. And when you returned, um, who did you room with? Tova. I went back to live with Tova again. Tova? Is that T-O-B-A? Mm -hmm. And how did you know her? Uh, she worked at Valley's as well. Okay. While you were living with Tova, um, did the defendant start visiting you at your apartment again? Yes. So the relationship sort of resumed? Yeah. Okay. And how often would you say that he came over? Um, maybe once a week. Did he usually bring anything with him when he came? Um, he usually brought me a bottle of wine, um, and sometimes he brought himself beer. And did you start up your sexual relationship again? After a little while, yeah. Um, now you've, you've, uh, you've talked about having sex twice, I think you said, right? Sort of. Okay, and that's the completed act that we're talking about? Once would be a completed act. Once was a completed act. Um, and you've talked about messing around, right? Mm -hmm. And um, was there oral sex as well? Um, just, the, just the same night as the completed act. Okay. And... Did he tell you what he was telling Nicole as an excuse to come see you? Uh, that he was going to Halo night at Derek's house. And what's Halo? It's a video game. Did he ever say anything to you to make you think that he planned to leave Nikki? No. Okay. Did he say things during this period about how he felt about you? Yes. And what did he say? Um, that he cared about me, like if I got upset when he was leaving sometime in the night, um, he would say, you know, remember or, you know, I really care about you, um, that sort of thing. And how did you feel about him? I, I really cared about him a lot. Um, were you hoping that he would leave? Nikki for you? I did, but at the same time, I didn't, I was conflicted because I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be the person that would take somebody away from marriage, even though I was kind of already, well, I actually was 
kind of worse that I was involved with him and he wasn't leaving her. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, at some point, did you figure out that wasn't going to happen? Yeah. Okay. So, tell us what happened then. What sort of prompted the end of it? So, um, when when I really realized that um, he wasn't gonna leave her, I would get kind of emotional when we would see each other. So um, one night he told me that um, I needed to figure out if I could handle the relationship or not. And he was gonna leave that up to me. Uh, so he said, let me know if, if you wanna continue this. And so I didn't. Okay. And did you meet someone soon after that? I met my husband. Okay. And um, did you take a road trip with your husband soon after that? Yeah, I was. Um, he was going to take a road trip, and it was a perfect way for me to really get away from absolutely everything, everybody involved in the with the gym, anybody who knew Dave, anybody who knew what had happened. So, okay. yeah. And um, you said I think that was in 2003. Yes. Ten years ago. Yeah. Okay. Did you ever talk to the defendant again? Um, I talked to him one more time when I was um, at my grandparents in Minnesota, um, one of our stops on a road trip. Mm -hmm. um, I yeah, said a formal goodbye, and um, you talked to him by phone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you call him or did he call you? I actually don't remember. I might have called him, but he might have called me because I had talked to Tova um, right before I'd spoken with him, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't tell Tova where I was. And so I don't remember if I called him to say goodbye. I was planning on doing it anyway, or if Tova had him call me to see if he could get me to tell where I was. Okay. I got it this moment. Um, David Peets is attorney. I'll be asking some questions. What I want to try to do is put some dates on things that took place uh, during the time that you knew David, okay? And um, you indicated that you were 20 years old when you met David. Is that right? I believe so, yes. Okay. And um, your date of birth is what? 12781. So it would have been 2001 when you met him. Right? Probably. It might have been 2000. It might have been the year 2000, mm -hmm. okay? Um, or 2001, okay? Mm -hmm. And then the relationship with David ended when you met your husband to be, is that right? Correct. And you said you've been married for five years, but I take it that um, this is the same person that you met back in 2000 two or three or whenever it was, and and you got married five years ago. Is that right? Yeah, we've been together for 10 years. 10 years, okay, mm -hmm. just so we know, put a time period on it. Now, is it correct that you met your husband in July of 2002? Um, I think it would have to be... July 2003. Well, would you take a look at the exhibit um, that was shown to you by the prosecutor? Is that still up there? Mm -hmm. Can I approach the witness, Your Honor? Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Strike, I'm handing you what's been previously marked as uh, State's Exhibit 28. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, does that appear to be a transcript of an interview that was done of you by the police? Mm -hmm. And just so we're clear on the date of the interview, 
Mm -hmm. um, does the first paragraph indicate that um, detect I'll paraphrase it, but Detective Cleary is interviewing you, and he says, today's date is 3-21-2012. And does that sound right based on your memory of it? Yes. Okay. Would you please go to page <clears throat> 34 of the interview? Uh, 3, is oh, I'm sorry. I'm okay. Do you want me to take a second before I ask my next question? I <clears throat> so, um, would you please um, <clears throat> take a look at um, page 34, and uh, do you see that about the middle of the page, do you see where the detective asks you, okay, and then when did you meet your husband? Do you see that question? Mm -hmm. And do you see your answering, I met my husband, let's see. We will be together 10 years in July, and this is 2012, so 2002. That, um, First, is that what you answered? That's what I answered. Um, I also um, I also We will be together 10 years in July, and this is 2012, so 2002. That, um... First, is that what you answered? That's what I answered. Um, I also... Um, I also... From the same, from a different number, um, a man called me and said, "Why are you calling my phone?" Um, I asked who it was. He said he was Dave Peets, and I, after talking to Dave many times on the phone, I knew that he wasn't. So, my assumption was she had somebody near her um, calling me to figure out if I would talk to him like I would talk to Dave. I see. So you felt you were being perhaps entrapped during that phone call? Yes. And you refused to talk to him? Correct. And I think you told us that um, your relationship with David uh, discontinued at that point, at least for a period of time. Correct. Now, assuming that the date that you met your husband was sometime in 2003, say the summer of 2003, um, th your husband-to-be, that would for sure be the end of any relationship that you had with David. Yes. And I believe you told the jury that the only other contact you had with David after that was that phone call he made to your grandparents' house in Minnesota. Well, to my cell phone at my grandparents' house, yes. Okay. I might have actually gone on two dates with my husband. Um, but had not had a, but we didn't have a serious relationship yet. Okay. Now, during the whole time uh, period that you and David, that you knew David, you had sex once. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And that would have been in some time when, in 2002? No, because um, that was actually after they were married. So it would have been, well, assuming that they got oh, wait, married in April of 2002. Okay, yes, that would have been sometime in 2002, maybe 2003. Okay. I, I'm not sure. Okay. But never had sex again after that, no. after that one time. And your this whole thing with David happened. Looking back on it now, it's over ten years ago, ten or eleven years ago, right? Mm -hmm. And instead of being twenty or twenty-one now, you're 
in your 30s, right, early 30s. Yeah. Yes. And looking back on it, I think you told us yourself that um, comments that David made to you, uh, those are oftentimes considered classic comments that uh, men make to women, and I suppose it might be the other way around too, where they're trying to convince somebody to have a relationship with them uh, uh, in spite of the fact that they're married. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to see through it now than I suppose when you were in your 20s. Yes. Looking back on it. Yes? Yes. Um, I believe in your statement to the police, you said you met Nicole Peets once after the phone incident. You actually met her once after that? I didn't meet her. I saw her. Okay. Was that just passing through the gym? Yes. And um, in terms of your roommates, one of your roommates was um, a name that start, began with N. I don't think I can pronounce it. Can you tell us that again, please? Noelia. How is that spelled? N-O-E-L-I-A. Okay. Another one of your roommates uh, was uh, Tova. Is that right? T-O-V-A? That's correct. And her name at the time was Tova French. Is correct. that correct? And do you know if it's now Tova Vanderveen? Um, I know that she got married and took a new name, um, but I have not had contact with Tova, so I wouldn't, wouldn't be positive of what her new last name is. Okay. And back when you were working at the gym, back in 2000 or 2001, 2002, uh, your last name was Hoffman at that point, right? Yes, it was. That's your maiden name, right? Yes. One second, Your Honor. Thank you. No further questions. Anything else, Ms. Strait? Just one quick question. Um, Ms. Strait, when you were there, when you were there, when you were there, the defendant was basically giving you a choice about whether you wanted to end the relationship. Is that right? Mm -hmm. um, was it your understanding from him that if you wanted it to continue, he would have continued it too? Yes. I think you have nothing else. Anything else? Uh, nothing more, Your Honor. You may stand up and you're excused. It looks like it's lunch time. Line up for this afternoon, then, or do you have the list there? Um, yeah, I have it for the mouth draft, but I can let the court know we're calling um, Samantha Jaffee, Jean Hansen Freeman, Renee Stewart, Avery Stevenson, and then we have three others potentially lined up. Okay, and you were you receive these, counsel? Yes, yes, we have. Your All right, so you're not any. Okay. All right. Thank you.